Welcome, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Um, I am Babis Marmanis, as Chris mentioned. Uh, I serve as the Chief Technology Officer and Vice President at Copyright Clearance Center. I would like to spend a few minutes with you today and discuss um, what we mean in broad terms uh, about the, when we say uh, the data dilemma. Uh, today, the entire publishing industry, like every other industry, relies more and more on technology. Uh, and I think this is especially true for, for scholarly publishers, but it's true for everyone. Technology is playing an increasingly bigger role in the infrastructure of our businesses. Uh, as customers demand faster, easier, and uh, comprehensive access to the content of your journals and your books. Uh, the content of um, these creative works, uh, the number of times that have been downloaded, uh, the number of times they have been shared, uh, the things that are written about them, all that is data. And technology is making, uh, making it possible, allows us to capture this data and process this data faster than ever, ever before. It also allows us to share this data with sister organizations and also access, tap on other data external to our organization, uh, such as things in public domain or even proprietary. So, um, we often hear um, the term big data tossed around to the point of cliché, but it is a reality. Last uh, uh, report from STM uh, mentions that there have been 2.5 million articles published last year. 2.5 million articles, about 7,000 articles if you do the math uh, every day. Um, that's a lot of data. And we're told by industry leaders and uh, observers alike that data is the new oil and information the new petroleum. Uh, but data, but all by itself, um, does not have a, a direct business value uh, beyond its own uh, context. And um, take, for example, a piece of paper, write a number down, uh, that's data. So, um, in my view, uh, the data dilemma, uh, if there is a dilemma, uh, which uh, we'll talk about, it's more about what to do with the data. How can we extract uh, meaning and value from it? But rather than thinking uh, about the data as the new oil, I like to think about data as a, the land that contains the oil. And the whole process um, of finding where the oil is, dig digging and extracting that to obtain value from it um, is what really um, the, 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 the matter of interest uh, should be. Uh, well, if we are able to capture this data and process this data, and uh, in, in, in if the whole point is to deliver a higher value to our customers through that, um, what changed? Why is it different now? Why now? Why are we talking about it now? Um, well, uh, there are three things. That, that have changed uh, in the past uh, few years. One is increasing computing um, power. Two is programmable infrastructure. And three is machine learning. Uh, let's look at them one by one. Com computing power. Uh, today, um, there have been uh, great advances in uh, uh, multiprocessor, uh, parallel, what's called parallel pr processing through multi-core CPUs or graphical processing units. That allows us uh, to execute instructions on machines uh, uh, very fast um, and beyond anything else we've seen before. Programmable infrastructure refers to what you must have heard before being referred to as the cloud. Uh, so the cloud is not just about virtualization. The cloud is about being able to create on demand an entire computing infrastructure for the processing that you need to do on your data. And last but not least is machine learning. So machine learning, advancing machine learning, allow us to uh, make computations that were impossible before. And it allows us to build cybernetics, meaning systems that where human interaction, human in the loop um, is always present and higher value on processing can be obtained by letting the machines learn from the interactions. An example of that is natural language processing. Uh, as you know, you've always been able to store your data in databases, uh, well-structured uh, uh, systems where you store your data into rows and columns. Uh, but the fact is that 80 to 90% of all content is unstructured. 
It's the articles, the content in the articles of your journal, so the content in your, in your book, the comments of the authors about a, an article uh, or the recommendations for a, a particular product. So um, these advances in uh, algori algorithms uh, have allowed companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon uh, provide greater value uh, to their customers. We're living at a moment of tremendous opportunity. If I may embellish my earlier metaphor, um, think, imagine that you just discovered your own planet. It's your planet. It's entirely new. Through prior research, you know that there, there are very valuable resources underneath the surface. You're orbiting around it now, and now you're saying, okay, my mission is to find, dig, capture, extract, and mine these resources so I can get value from it. And, um, you know, you see, your data is your planet. <laughs> That's the metaphor. And it can be oil, it can be natural gas, it can be any precious metal, it, it can be anything else. Um, and the results of, of uh, mining um, your data will have the comment equally a tremendous value uh, as mining a new planet. So the infrastructure capabilities and the algorithmic capabilities available to us have reached a tipping point. These things are no longer the bottleneck for us. The bottleneck is our ability to innovate and our imagination. How can we make use of those resources? Um, and the challenge is to embrace new ways to extract value. So, so, so that we can deliver that value to our customers, to your customers. A number of publishers are already doing just that. Uh, and we will hear some of their success stories in just a minute from my fellow presenters, Jim Bryan of Trajectory and Sybil Wan of Sparho. Of course, the machines can crunch the numbers all day long uh, and do so at lightning speed. But as of yet, no computer has been able to create an original idea. So fear not. Um, <laughs> the professional instinct and a uniquely human ingredient of gut feeling uh, is still valuable and in, on demand. In my view, instinct and intuition uh, have a place in the world of publishing, and I believe that the machines are here to help us, to make us more powerful, not to replace us. If we look back at the first industrial uh, revolution, there were some people who were concerned that machine-based manufacturing would eventually take over, leaving the human from the outside looking in. As we all know, that didn't happen. What did happen is that we were able to produce uh, products and, and increase our, our uh, GDPs um, a lot faster and a, a greater scale than ever before. Uh, today, there is an analogy with that in, in the sense that um, much like machines in the first industrial revolution allow us to transform raw materials into physical products, today machines can help us transform data into information, into information products. Uh, similarly, creating the landscape for tremendous advances. World Economic Forum Executive Chairman Klaus Schwab recently wrote, uh, that we were, ent we were entering an era that he calls the fourth industrial revolution. He says, we stand on the brink of a technological revolution that will fundamentally alter the way we live, work, and relate to one another. In its scale, scope, and complexity, the transformation will be unlike anything humankind has experienced before. Clearly, the world is changing, and it behooves all of us to change with it. If we remember Darwin, throughout history, it wasn't the strongest who survived. It was the species that was able to adapt. Today, our willingness to get beyond our fears and to begin tapping into the value inside our data will differentiate the pioneers from the laggards, the winners from the losers. In my view, our industry is rapidly approaching what Andy Grove, retired CEO of Intel Corporation, calls a strategic inflection point. The point where there are two major pathways, doing business as usual or embracing and adapting to the new. Grove says that at this moment, these pathways are fairly close together. 
but they will soon diverge into a growing gap between growth and success, or entropy and decline. The dilemma is, do you want to be a dynamo or do you want to be a dinosaur? Let's not let fear um, stop us. Let's start digging and exploring and extracting value from our data. Thank you.